Welcome, if you're new to the channel, my name is Elliot, and you're watching Rickety Ski Reviews. Today, we're gonna be talking about the Head Core 105. Now, I am going to be rating these as a powder ski. First off, big shout out to Head. They were willing to send me their skis, and not every ski company does that. So, big shout out to my friends over at Head. Thank you for sending this to me. They did not pay me for this review, so this is still gonna be my honest opinion, but I wanted to disclose to you when companies send me the product versus when they don't. And I gotta say, it's a lot better when these companies send me the skis because I can spend multiple days on it. Now, it was a little weird getting the 105 in March, but that was just kinda how it worked out, and it actually was perfect timing because we got a big old snowstorm, probably the last storm, the last powder days of the year, and I got to spend it on these skis. So, without further ado, let's just jump right into the review, but big thanks to Head. Not every ski company is willing to send me their skis to put under a microscope, so I really appreciate you guys doing that. Now that we've talked about that, let's talk about construction. This ski is extraordinarily light. It comes in at about 1,850 grams. It is made with two sheets of carbon. It uses poplar and caruba wood. It is 105 millimeter width underfoot, as the name says. And as you can see, it's got a pretty healthy amount of splay. Kind of get it at an angle where you can see it. A pretty normal kind of gradual splay in the tip and a fairly common amount of splay in the tail. But the thing that stands out to me the most, honestly, is for how wide and how long these are, these skis are extraordinarily light. Now, I'm gonna be reviewing these as a powder ski, same way I do the QST 106, same as I did for the Atomic Bent 110s. You could use this a little bit on trail. It is kind of advertised as an all-mountain ski, but I would say that's mostly baloney. This is gonna be primarily a powder ski. I would not buy this with the intent of having it be a one ski quiver. I would buy this primarily as a powder ski that can carve a little bit in between powder runs. Now I skied these in a 184, which means that they have a 17.8 meter turning radius. And overall at six foot one, I would say 184 felt like the perfect length on these. So now that we talked about the specs, let's talk about the most important part. How did this ski actually feel? What were my first impressions when skiing it? And honestly, the most distinct thing about the ski is just how light it feels on your feet. I mean, on paper it's light, but there's a big difference between a heavy powder ski and a light powder ski, and this ski was extraordinarily light. I think that what one thing when you start talking about light powder skis versus heavier powder skis is you can get a little bit into flotation, which it does help having a lighter powder ski, but more what I find with some of these lighter powder skis is the big trade-off with having that flotation is that they can get a little bit more hung up in stickier snow, and they're a little bit more maneuverable. I tend to look at a light powder ski like this and think that it's the kind of ski I would recommend to somebody who's a little timid about powder, who's a little bit new to the powder realm, who maybe is a competent skier, but is new to going off trail and going in the powder. And I think that for a lot of people, if I had somebody who is new to the powder, this would be my recommendation. This is a great first powder ski for people who are kind of first trying to explore 
off trail. Just because it's so forgiving, it's so easy to redirect where you wanna go. If you go into an area that has too much brush and bramble, it's very easy to traverse out. It's a really easy platform to kind of make quick turns and cut across the hill and get where you want. So I think if you're looking for a first powder ski or you're very new to off-trail skiing, I think a ski like this is an excellent start. But that's just my first impression. Now that we've talked about that, let's talk about good and then we'll talk about the bad because as you know, every ski has great pluses, but there's also drawbacks. So the good, honestly, a lot of it is by design. It's that good flotation. It also has a nice powder turn. It kind of feels smooth when you make it. It's a nice platform under your foot. It isn't one of those skis where you have to kind of sit back on it or be super forward. You can kind of just stand right in the middle of the ski and it turns like a normal ski. So you don't have to adjust yourself too much to it. It's very accessible for a lot of people when it comes to powder. The other thing that I really liked about this lightweight powder ski is the tree turns. It had good, quick, responsive turns when you're in the trees, which as we know, year after year is becoming more and more important because that's where you find those stashes of powder. Another good thing I felt just in like the trail to trail carving is that it felt like a good platform underfoot. There wasn't anything where it felt kind of wobbly or it, you know, had plenty of grab underfoot. It had a perfectly strong platform. It wasn't like I was bottoming it out. It never felt noodly or anything like that, which can happen with some of your lighter skis. So I think Head did a really good job using that carbon to keep it light while also keeping it stable underfoot. It's surprising how light it is while also feeling really stable underfoot. But now that we've talked about the good, let's talk about the drawbacks of the ski. And like I said, every ski has them. So the biggest one that's noticeable, and this is honestly been a theme with most lightweight powder skis is that the balance can feel a little weird with the ski. It is very easy to be too far forward and then just have the tips catch onto the snow, especially when it's not perfectly light powder. On heavier snow, the ski gets caught up very easily because it's so light. So it's just, it's very, very easy on these skis to just be slightly too far forward and have the tips kind of grab and send you over the top especially in some of that stickier snow. I think with these skis, the balance can feel a little bit weird. The other thing with lightweight skis is they don't tend to carry their momentum very well. Because they're so light, they kind of get hung up in that snow and they have a top speed that you find, like the most momentum they can carry through the off trail powder. And so with these, I found that where like a Black Crow's Atris or a Solomon QST, those are kind of heavier skis and you can really carry your momentum to set up some more aggressive lines. That's why I think this is a ski that's better for people who are new to powder skiing because it's not gonna let you send and gain momentum, but it will allow you to be like comfortable and maneuverable. But for me, as I'm getting more experienced in off trail and powder skiing, I wanna carry a little bit more momentum and I wanna get a little bit more aggressive with my powder skiing. So it just depends on your preference, but with the skis being so light, they are not kind of as sendy and go for it as the Atris or the QST. The other thing I found with these skis as a downside is the way that they're balanced kind of in towards this more the center and you kind of have that traditional skiing style, they're not very fun to sit on the tails with. There's just not that much of a platform to lean back and float and kind of slide out your turns. This is more of a traditional turn. So if you like that kind of surfier, almost snowboard-like turn, that isn't present in this powder ski. I don't think it's meant to be there, but just so you know, if that's the kind of turn you like in the powder, it's not as strong here. This is more of a traditional turn. If you wanna sit back, lean back in the powder, this isn't the best platform to do that. Now that may change if you mounted the bindings farther back, but I don't think so. I think that's more of a design choice. So again, it's it's not like a huge flaw, but if that's kind of the way you like to ski powder, be ready to be a little bit more center. You can't sit on these tails as much as other skis. So with all that being said, what kind of score would I give this head core 105? Honestly, after talking to Zach about it a lot and getting a few days runs on it, which is nice because when I demo these myself, I can only put one day and I have to really be analytical about it. And what's nice about having these multiple days is I could try them in different conditions, even get other people on it to get second opinions. And the conclusion that I've kind of come to with this ski is that it's kind of in that same vein as the Atomic Backland. I think the ski might even be really good for touring because it's so light and because it's so wide and light. But 
you know, that's a choice. You've got very easy turns, you've got very forgiving powder skis, but they're not very sendy and you can't be as aggressive with your momentum and your lines. So I think for me personally, as someone who's not paid by head, I really like these. I had a good time, but I was left kind of wanting more and wanting more momentum. Um, and that could just be where I'm at. I think for somebody who's maybe a little bit more tentative or new to powder skiing, this would be an awesome first option and I have no problem recommending it. But for me personally, I just want a ski that sends a little bit more, that lets me sit in the back of it a little bit more and surf out my turns, and just gonna allow me to take a slightly more aggressive line. And that was kind of a sentiment that Zach echoed as well. So for me, total, I think this is a great ski, but it just is a little bit light and it can feel a little bit clumsy sometimes because it's so light and the tips are so easy to catch. So for me, overall, I give an 8.2 out of 10. I think it's pretty amazing that they were able to make this ski so light and I think that it does a pretty good job. I definitely wouldn't ski this as an all mountain ski. It's just, it's so light that anytime you're on kind of hard pack crud, it gets a little pingy and a little bit chattery. It doesn't carve that well. It can kind of carve, but you know, really this is meant to be a powder ski. And for if you're looking for a lightweight powder ski and you're tentative off trail, this is an awesome option. But for me personally, I gotta say, I think overall it's an 8.2. It's a great introduction for most people into powder. But for me, I just want a little bit more momentum. I wanna ride the tails a little bit more. And maybe that's because I have a background as a snowboarder for a few years, but it just doesn't surf the way I wanted it to. But it also like wasn't sinking in, it wasn't failing as a powder ski. It's just kind of limited. It's a good introduction, but not something I would want for where I'm at as I learn to ski off trail and in the powder. But overall, a good design, and I'm really amazed that they were able to make it so lightweight given its width and given everything else. So I think Head did a good job designing these. I just think that they're a bit limited in their range, so. Yeah, 8.2 overall, still a very generous score and a very nice ski. I just think you have to be the right person for this type of ski, at least for me to recommend it personally. Anyway, I will put a link down below for these skis. I know they have already gone on sale for the 2024s, so I will put that link down below. If you like this review and you found it helpful and you wanna support the channel directly, that's a really good way to do it, especially if you're already buying the skis anyway. I don't care if you buy the skis, I'm not here to sell you skis, but if you're gonna buy them anyway and this review helped you with the purchase, then feel free to use the link, or if you're gonna buy anything else, feel free to use that link down below. But. That is my honest opinion. As somebody who is not paid by head skis, who has just sent the skis to review, that's my honest opinion. So I hope you found it helpful. And if you like this kind of content, please consider liking and subscribing. That's a free way to support the channel. We also have memberships down below. But as always, just thanks for being here. Thanks for watching my videos. Without you guys, this stuff isn't possible, so I really appreciate it. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. See ya. Oh, uh -huh.